Hello. This is a video on modular arithmetic. Last week we had an introductory video on congruence, modulo m. Let's look at our definition. So we have a positive integer m, which is going to be my modulus. And we're looking at this statement right here. A is congruent to B mod M. Now the formal definition is here. M divides the difference of these. M divides A minus B. Well, if M divides A minus B, that means M times some integer K is equal to A minus B. And if we add B to both sides of that equation, I get this equation, A equals B plus KM. Maybe I'll write that in a slightly different form. <coughs> in a slightly different form, this is A equals KM plus B. That should be familiar to you. This is the division algorithm. We're taking A and we're dividing by M. We're getting a quotient of K and we're getting a remainder of B. And we found by the division algorithm that B, a good remainder needs to be less than my divisor. It could be zero, but greater than or equal to zero. So this is the idea here that we're really looking at remainders. So let me do a couple of examples here. Let's say we have mod, mod 10. Let's think about the number 32 mod 10. Well, it is equal to 20 or congruent to 22 mod 10. That's a true statement. It's also congruent to 12 mod 10. But the bottom line here is that 32 is congruent to 2 mod 10. The answer that I'm mainly going to be interested in is a number between 0 and m minus 1. All numbers in mod 10 can be reduced down to a number from 0 up through 9. We'll see this in more examples. Here's a restatement. Unless otherwise stated, when giving answers modulo m, give an integer that's between 0 and m minus 1. So let's take a look at the addition table for modulo 8. Uh, this is not super hard, but it is new, so that makes it a little bit challenging. Zero plus anything is the anything. So we still have zero as our additive identity. One plus one is two, one plus two is three, four, five, six. One plus six is seven, but one plus seven is eight. Eight divided by eight is zero. Two plus one is three, four, five, six, seven. 2 plus 6 is 8, but that's congruent to 0 mod 8. And 2 plus 7 is 9, which is congruent to 1 mod 8. I hope you're starting to get the idea. Let's drop down to row 6. 6 plus 0 is 6. 6 plus 1 is 7. 6 plus 2 is 8, which is 0, 6 plus 3 is 9, which is 1. And as you might expect, we get a nice pattern here. The 
last position is 6 plus 7, which is 13. And when I subtract 8, I get 5. You always can subtract 8, and it doesn't change anything. You might fill in the rest of the table yourself. We have a very nice setup here. Every row and every column has all eight digits. Multiplication is a different story, though. Let's take a look at our next table. OK, now we're doing multiplication. 0 times anything is going to be 0, as expected. Zero times anything is zero. One is our multiplicative identity again. So one times anything is anything. One times A is A. Two times zero is zero. Two times one is two. But what's two times two? Two times two is four, and I can always subtract my modulus. Four minus three is one. Now we're going to create a multiplication table for modulo eight. So what I'd like you to do is to either take some graph paper or make your own table. OK, I hope that you've created a table for yourself. This is going to be a multiplication table. So maybe I'll put a x in here for multiplication. 0 times anything is 0. So we do have the 0 property of multiplication. And uh, 1 times anything is the anything. So we do have the. multiplicative identity. Now we have an interesting situation here. Zero times two is, is zero. Two times one is two, no problem there. Two times two is four. Two times three is six. But right here in this location, two times four is eight, but 8 is 0. 2 times 5. See if you can figure out what 2 times 5 is. 2 times 5 is 10 minus 8 is 2. 2 times 6 is 12, which is actually 4. And 2 times 7 is 14. 14 minus 8 is 6. Interesting. Kind of an odd looking row there. I got even numbers only. Hmm. Might be interesting to figure out why. In the next row, three times three is nine minus eight is one. Three times four is 12 minus eight is four. Three times five is 15 minus one is seven. 3 times 6. 3 times 6 is 18. Minus 8 is 10. Minus 8 again is 2. And 21. 21 divided by 8 is going to be remainder 5. Interesting. If you look at this row, I have all the numbers 0 through 7, but they are not in order. You might see if you can figure out this row on your own. Interesting. I got a bunch of zeros and a bunch of fours. This one is atypical. Let's do the bottom row for practice. 7 times 0 is 0. Seven times one is seven. Seven times two is 14. 
minus six minus eight is six seven times three is 21 minus all the multiples of six that we can subtract is five 28 subtracting 24 gives four 35 subtracting 32 gives three 42 minus 40 gives two and 49 minus 48 is one now fill in the rest of the table on your own here is our multiplication table mod 8 Notice that some numbers do not have a multiplicative inverse. For example, six. I can't multiply six times anything to get one. So there is no multiplicative inverse of six. That's huge. Okay, let's just do a little bit more practice. The idea if you're doing mod nine now, is you subtract away as many nines as you can until you get your remainder. And the remainder needs to be between zero and eight inclusive. Eight plus six is 14, minus nine is five. Five times six mod seven. Five times six is 30. Subtracting the largest multiple of seven, is 28, so five times six is two mod seven. Now let's take a look at getting a negative number. Four minus nine is negative five. So the thought bubble here is negative five. But just like I can, in the first example, subtract nine as many times as I want to, I can add my modulus as many times as I want to. So I'm going to take negative 5 plus 14. Negative 5 plus 14 is 9. In our last two examples, we want to see if multiplicative inverses exist. Find the multiplicative inverse of 5 mod 8. In other words, is there something you can multiply times 5 to get 1? And similarly, is there a multiplicative inverse of 6? Can we take 6 times something to get 1? Let's look back at our multiplication table mod 8 to see the answer. Looking in the five row, I do see one in the five row. Oops, I'm looking at the addition table. I need to get to the multiplication table. Looking at the five row, I do find a one. And in order to get a one, I need to multiply five times five. So the multiplicative inverse of five is five, interesting. On the other hand, if we look at six, the six row, I am not finding a one in the six row. So six does not have an inverse. Let me go ahead um, here and highlight um, the inverse here for five. Let's see if I can get my pen to work here. Now I've highlighted in the table that five times five is one. In other words, five is its own inverse. So my multiplicative inverse here is five. And down here, there is no multiplicative inverse of six mod eight. Of course, our challenge is to generalize and try to figure out when a multiplicative inverse exists and when it doesn't exist. 
This has been a video on modular arithmetic for the number theory class. Have a great day.